Hello and welcome to another video. In this one, I'm going to show you how to make a very simple uh, Python Docker file and you know show you why I layer things in a particular way. And we're going to make a Hello World Flask app at the same time because <laughs> I need something to Dockerize. Uh, but anyways, let's jump into that. Okay, so for this, we're uh, going to make a very small Flask app. Uh, app.py import flask flask.flask name. And we're just going to return hello world. Um, something like that. Yeah. Um, and if we do virtual VM, I'm just going to get, make sure this works outside of Docker before we get into Docker. Uh, flask run app.py. Uh oh, is it just flask run? App is not defined. <laughs> what do you mean? Oh, got to do that. Okay, cool. So this is just a basic Flask app, um, and we're going to set up. Uh, so we have our code here, and we also want to do pip freeze to requirements.txt. This will contain our dependencies. So you can see we are installing all these packages, and um, we actually don't need this virtual environment. I mostly just set it up to show you. What we're going to get started with um but this is basically our source our application and our requirements so now your application might grow and be directories and other stuff as well um but this is just a, a good place to get started with all right so let's open up a docker file and i'm going to be basing mine on ubuntu some people prefer to base theirs on alpine i usually find that alpine is not a great choice for python mostly because you have to build a lot of stuff from source but that is potentially changing there has been some recent work to standardize the, um, similar to many Linux, there will be a many, many muscle, I think it is, uh, which is the libc that's used in Alpine. Uh, but anyway, we're, we're going to be using Ubuntu today, uh, which I tend to prefer for building Docker images anyway. So from Ubuntu Focal, and we're going to install Python into this image. Get update. and get our long incantation for installing packages. Uh, we're going to install Python 3, and we're going to install Python 3 VM, because uh, we're going to be setting up a virtual environment inside of this Docker image. And I'm going to delete that. And so let's actually get that building right now, uh, just because that's going to take a while, and we can keep this layer cached later. So this is basically setting up the Python dependencies, the interpreter that we need. Oh, what did I typo? Oh, I typoed recommends. We need an extra M here. My bad. Fixed. Okay, so this is going to install the Python interpreter as well as VM. We're going to be setting up a virtual environment to install our app into, and uh, I have a couple of videos about this that I'll link in the description. Basically setting up a virtual environment so it doesn't interfere with the actual operating system itself. Um, and so let's actually set up that virtual environment. So we're going to put it onto the path and path equals vm slash bin dollar path. And we're going to run python 3 dash m vm to slash vm here. That'll set up our virtual environment. Now we actually want to install that same set of requirements that we did before. And I'm going to do this in a separate layer. So what I could do lazily is just copy dot dot. Um, and that would copy all of the source from my working directory, both the application and the requirements file. But I actually want to split the application and the requirements file apart so that I can rebuild less often. So instead of doing that, um, and we're going to put port or source. That way we're working inside of our own special directory here. And we're going to copy requirements.txt to dot. So we're only copying in the requirements here. That means if you know the application changes, I don't need to rebuild this layer here. I might need to rebuild a later layer, but I don't need to rebuild this upper layer here. And that's going to save us development time, essentially. Uh, but yeah, once we've set up our virtual environment, we can pip install these requirements. pip install dash r dash r requirements.txt. Now, uh, there are a couple options to pip that I recommend using. The first is pip is going to send stuff into a cache directory by default. So I usually specify dash dash no cacheter. Um, you can also turn off pip's version check because it's annoying and not helpful. 
Um, I, I think it's pip. It's, well, I think it's disable version check. I'm not 100% sure, so we'll see if that errors. And if it, if it errors, uh, well, then we'll just leave it out. There is an option for it. I don't remember it specifically. So this is going to set up our virtual environment, and it's going to install our dependencies here. So if we build that again now, uh, please work. Please work. <laughs> Dang it. OK, well, it's not disabled version check. Um, I think there's an environment variable for it as well, but we'll just leave that out um, and just use no cacheter for now. Probably do pip install dash dash help and find, figure it out, but yeah, whatever, it doesn't matter. Uh, so this is going to set up our virtual environment, install all of our dependencies. And so now if we run this image, docker run rmti test, uh, you'll see that we have, you know, the flask command line utility is on, on the path. Um, it of course is erroring because we haven't installed our actual application code yet. That's the last step that we're going to do. Um, but our dependencies are all installed and working great there. So the last thing that we're going to do is do um, copy dot to dot and that is going to copy all of the code from the working directory into our image build that again you'll see that we end up with our image here and if we do docker run rm test flask run uh, you'll see that it runs a flask server now granted this is inside docker so we're not going to be able to see that port there um, but i think if we do dash p5000 That'll allow us to. That will not allow us to do that. Is it P5000? 5000? Uh, I don't remember the port binding. <laughs> uh, but there's a way to bind ports. Wait, why isn't that working? Hmm. Uh, but we can look inside the image if you wanted, if we want to do that. But there is a problem with this right now in that. Um, well, actually, this is good enough. That's how you would make an app. Uh, the cool thing about separating these two things into layers is if I go to run, if I go to build here, uh, you'll see that it cached the uh, virtual environment build here. But if we change our app, so let's, you know, we shouldn't have hello world. It should clearly be hello, hello world. Um, and we go to build again, you'll see that it skips right over this. Um, you know, it doesn't need to rebuild this virtual environment. It's just going to recopy our application code into the image. So it, it goes much, much faster. OK, I figured out why it wasn't working. So when you're in Docker, uh, especially, well, when you're in Podman, <laughs> I think Docker is a little bit different here. Uh, when you're in rootless Podman, the IP address space inside the container is shared with the host, but in a weird way. Uh, so you need to tell Flask to bind to 0000, which is going to allow all connections. Now, generally, you don't want to do this because anyone who could connect to your computer could then connect to that. And Flask's server is, you know, a development server. So you don't really want to expose it to all the ports. Uh, but since it's inside of a container and like we're you know, specifically binding it to one host on our port, it's, I don't know, not, not as bad, I guess. Um, but if you do this now, uh, and actually, I added this TCP, but I don't think I need this. I think I can just do this. Um, we're telling Flask to use uh, host 0000. And now I should be able to curl. Oh, well, maybe I do need the TCP. Try and change too many things at once. And that's why things go problematic. But yeah, there you go. So you can see now uh, we get our hello, hello world. And so that's you know working there. But anyway, that's, that's how I would set up a Docker file for working with Python. Uh, and being careful to separate the requirements and virtual M setup from the actual code. That way you don't invalidate your image every time you change your code. But anyway, hopefully this was useful. If there are additional things you would like me to explain, leave a comment below or reach out to me on the various platforms. But thank you all for watching, and I will see you in the next one.